watching News at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chittagong Center. I'm Nuzat Sharmin. And this is Salahuddin Ahmed with you. You have just heard the highlights. Now on to the details. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will leave Rome tonight for home, winding up her four-day official visit to Italy and Vatican City. An Etihad Airways flight carrying the Premier and her entourage members will depart Leonardo da Vinci Fiumicino Airport in Rome for Abu Dhabi at 10 a.m. local time. Bangladesh Ambassador to Italy, Abdus Subhan Shigdar, will see the Premier off at the airport. On her way back home, Sheikh Hasina will make one day stop over in the UAE capital, Abu Dhabi. She is scheduled to reach Hazrat Shah Jalal International Airport in Dhaka in the morning on Friday. The Premier arrived in Italy on Sunday to attend the 41st session of the Governing Council of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD. At an invitation of Pope Francis, Sheikh Hasina visited the Holy Vatican City. President Mohammed Abdul Hamid has said that successful completion of various government projects made the country self-reliant in food. He said this while handing over KIB Krishi Poduk at Krishibid Institution at Farmgate in the capital today. KIB President AMM Saleh chaired the function, which was also addressed by Fisheries and Animal Resources Minister Narayun Chandru Chandu. President Abdul Hamid urged country's agriculturists and researchers to invent sustainable, technology-based and environment-tolerant agricultural production method using their knowledge. He underscored the need for introducing a method for producing various varieties of rice in Haur areas in a short period. The President said, country's fertile agricultural land is gradually losing its productivity due to intensive use of chemical fertilizer and excessive pesticides. Farmers should be encouraged to increase the use of organic fertilizer and organic pesticides, he said. Later, the president handed over Krishi Poduk to 11 recipients. A delegation of Jatiyo Shangshud whips, led by Chief Whip A.S.M. Firoz, made a curtsy call on President Muhammad Abdul Hamid at Bongu Bhabun today. The delegation congratulated President Abdul Hamid for being re-elected as the President of Bangladesh for the second consecutive term. During the meeting, they also presented a bouquet to President. They wished sound health of the President and success in his life. Mohammed Abdul Hamid also thanked the delegation members. President's Press Secretary Mohammed Jainal Abidin and secretaries concerned to the President and high officials were present. State Minister for Power, Energy and Mineral Resources Nasrul Hamid has said the big challenge for the power sector is investment and 21 billion US dollars have already been invested in the power sector. He said this while taking part in the general discussion on Thanksgiving motion for delivering the address by the President. Earlier, the House resumed its sitting with the Speaker, Dr. Shirin Sharmin Chaudhry, in the chair this afternoon. The Buddhist Religious Welfare Trust Bill 2018 was placed today in the Jatiyo Shongshud, amending the Buddhist Religious Welfare Trust Ordinance 1983 for establishing a peaceful society maintaining the communal harmony, including welfare of the Buddhist community living in the country. Religious Affairs Minister Principal Mothi Rahman placed the bill in the House. The bill was sent to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on the Religious Affairs Ministry for providing report after further scrutinization. 
Later, the Christian Religious Welfare Trust Bill 2018 was placed today in the Jatiya Shongshod, amending the Christian Religious Welfare Trust Ordinance 1983. Religious Affairs Minister Principal Motiu Rahman placed the bill. The bill was also sent to the Parliamentary Standing Committee for providing report after further scrutinization. Meanwhile, Law, Justice and Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anisul Haq informed Tariq Rahman is convicted in two cases, while four cases remained pending. He informed this in the tabled question and answer session in the Parliament today. The Minister said Tariq Rahman was convicted in two cases, Zia Orphanage Trust case and Money Laundering Act case. He, however, said Tariq Rahman, his wife, Dr. Jubaida Rahman, and mother-in-law, said that Iqbal Mand Banu were accused in a case for amassing wealth illegally. Besides, two more cases, including grenade attack in 2004 case, are still pending against him. The House will resume its sitting at 4.30 p.m. tomorrow. Industries Minister Amir Hussain Amu has said the defeated forces of the Liberation War, those who have killed Bongo Bondhu along with most of his family members and distorted history of the independence, are still active in the society. The minister said this at a commemorating meeting marking former Chittagong City Mayor A.B.M. Mohiuddin Chaudhry in Chittagong today. Presided over by the acting president of Chittagong City Awami League, Mahdabuddin Chaudhry, among others, organizing secretary, barrister Mohibul Hassan Chaudhry Nofal, and Chittagong City Mayor A.J.M. Nasruddin also addressed the meeting. Amir Hussain Amu called upon the leaders and activists to work unitedly for getting all discrepancies for Awami League's victory in the next general elections. Health and Family Welfare Minister Mohammad Nasim has said Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is expected to inaugurate the full-fledged medical university in Rajshahi on 22nd February. The Health Minister said this while addressing a view exchange meeting at the Conference Hall of Rajshahi Medical College Hospital, RMCH, today. Chaired by RMCH Director Brigadier General Mohammad Jamilur Rahman, the meeting was addressed, among others, by Fazli Hussain Badshah MP, former Mayor of Ratshahi City Corporation AHM Khairuzzaman Liton, Vice Chancellor of Ratshahi Medical University Professor Masum Habib, and Principal of Ratshahi Medical College Professor Anwar Habib. The Health Minister said the government, led by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, is sincerely working to ensure qualitative and standard healthcare services for all. Road Transport and Bridges Minister Obadul Kader has commented that the then caretaker government and anti-corruption commission had lodged case against PNP leader Begum Khaled Azia. Awami League government did not do so. Obadul Kader was addressing a rally arranged by local Awami League at Thulot in Savard after inaugurating a newly constructed bridge on Bongshi River today. Dhamrai MP M. A. Malik, former MP Benzir Ahmed and Dhaka Zilla Purishot Chairman Mahbubur Rahman were also present. The Road Transport and Bridges Minister said, terrorists and drug traders have no place in Awami League. The only goal of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is to lead the country towards advancement and Awami League will return to power in the next general election, he added. Information Minister Hassanul Hakinu has said it is not the job of media to create sympathy in favor of convicted people. The minister was speaking at a discussion organized marking Bangladesh Press Council Day at the Press Council Hall in the capital today. State Minister for Information Tarana Halim was present as special guest. Secretary of Press Council Shamul Chandra Kormokar, among others, addressed the meeting with Chairman of the Press Council Justice Muhammad Momtazuddin in the chair. Tarana Halim urged mass media to practice objective journalism to portray real picture of the society. Information Minister said the present government is working to establish rule of law in the country through ensuring justice for all. Hassanul Haq Inu said both print and electronic media should raise their voices against criminal activities to root out corruption and misdeeds from the society. Now, international news.
the United Nations urged for the The United Nations urged for the immediate repatriation of Rohingya people from Bangladesh. The UN Security Council has made the call at a special meeting on February 13, 2018. At the meeting, the US Ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley, urged the UN Security Council to ensure Myanmar military to be held accountable for its campaign against Rohingyas. Here is a report by Mahbub Rahman. United Nations expressed its deep concern on Rohingya crisis. During a special meeting on 13 February 2018, the United Nations Security Council vowed to keep Myanmar's situation high on its agenda. Permanent representative of Kuwait to the UN, Mansoor al Otaibi, presided over the meeting. UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, who was speaking by video conference from Geneva, told the UNSC that Myanmar has failed to lay the groundwork for the safe return of Rohingya people. Let me be clear. Conditions are not yet conducive to the voluntary repatriation of Rohingya refugees. The causes of their flight have not been addressed, and we have yet to see substantive progress on addressing the exclusion and denial of rights that has deepened over the last decades, rooted in their lack of citizenship. United States Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley told the Security Council that powerful forces in the Myanmar government have denied the ethnic cleansing in Rakhine State. The Associated Press recently told the story of Kadir, a Rohingya man from the village of Gudarpin. Kadir and 14 of his friends were choosing sides for a game of a traditional Burmese sport when the Burmese military began shooting. Nikki Haley also called for the release of Reuters news agency reporters arrested for reporting on the massacre of Rohingya Muslims. Bangladesh ambassador and permanent representative to the UN, Masud bin Mumin said the UN Security Council should continue to act on behalf of the international community as the custodian for the process of voluntary, safe and dignified return of the Rohingya people from Bangladesh. This could critically depend on their perception of the situation on the ground to be conducive to their safe and sustainable return with their rights restored and without the fear of reprisal. At the meeting, Britain, France, United States, Netherlands, Kazakhstan, Peru all called for immediate repatriation of Rohingya people from Bangladesh. Mahabubur Rahman, International Desk, Bangladesh Television. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has hit back after police said he should be charged over alleged bribery cases. Speaking on the Israeli television, he branded the allegations baseless and pledged to continue as leader. Netanyahu has said he was certain that the truth would be revealed. His comments follow a police statement that said there was enough evidence to indict him for bribery, fraud and breach of trust in two separate cases. But Mr. Netanyahu said the allegations will end with nothing. Now back to national news. Disaster Management and Relief Minister Mufazul Hossein Chaudhry Maya has urged the world community to mount pressure on the Myanmar government to take back the Rohingyas as soon as possible. The minister said this while distributing rice among the Rohingyas at Palu Khali camp at Cox's Bazar today. 2,000 tons of rice have been sent by the Indonesian government as relief assistance. Secretary of the Ministry, Mohamed Shah Kamal, Rohingya Relief and Re Rehabilitation Commissioner, Abul Kalam Azad, and representatives of the Indonesian government were present. Thai Ambassador to Bangladesh, Panpi Mon Suwana Pongse, called on Primary and Mass Education Minister, Mustafizur Rahman, at the Secretariat today. During the meeting, various aspects of mass education development in Bangladesh were discussed. Additional Secretary, Primary and Mass Education Giyasuddin, Dr. A.F.M. Anzur Kadir, and Joint Secretary, Muhammad Abdul Mannan, were present. 
The minister said that the government has been successful in bringing 10% of country's children to schools as part of the Millennium Development Goals. He also said that the present government is working on implementation of projects adopted by it for attaining SDGs. The 11-member delegation of the European Union led by Zen Lambert met with State Minister for Labour and Employment Mujibul Hok Chunnu at the Secretariat today. During the meeting, the State Minister said two new labour courts would be set up in Silet and Rongpur to ensure justice for the labourers. The State Minister said there are seven labour courts in the country. Of those, three are in Dhaka, he added. Now news on sports. Bangladesh will face Sri Lanka in the first T20 of two match series tomorrow at Mirpur without Tamim Iqbal and Mushfiqur Rahim due to their injuries. Tamim will miss first T20 due to muscle pain in the arm and back crest while Mushfiq facing wrist injury. The match will start at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Bangladesh Television will telecast the match live. Meanwhile, Tiger skipper Mah Mahmudullah expressed that they want to play fearless cricket against Sri Lanka with new players. He said this in the pre-match conference at Mirpur Shire Bangla Stadium today. The FIDE rating chess tournament under 2000 rating started at the National Sports Council in the capital today. General Secretary of the Bangladesh Chess Federation, Sayyid Shahabuddin Shamim, inaugurated the tournament. Vice President of the Federation, K.M. Shahidullah, and the patron, Mukaddisur Rahman Khan, were also present on the occasion. A total of 133 players are participating in the tournament. Now to end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina starts return home journey tonight, concluding four-day official visit to Italy. Successful completion of government projects made country self-reliant in food, says President Mohammed Abdul Hamid at KIB award-giving ceremony. Former caretaker government and anti-corruption commission, not our Mili government, filed corruption case against Khalid Zia, comments Abdul Obaidul Qadir. Creating sympathy for or imposing glory on convicted criminals not media's job says information minister UN Security Council for immediate repatriation of Rohingyas sheltered in Bangladesh and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka meet in the first T20 of two match series at Mirpur tomorrow That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us.